Here's the situation. My neighbor's wife was admitted to the hospital two weeks ago for a serious health condition. I went to check on my neighbor and was shocked to know that none of the other neighbors helped by offering to come to clean his house or cook him a hot meal in this freezing cold. So I had a meeting with the neighbors and told them shame on them for not stepping up and rushing for help. They complained about being busy with their problems, but I told them one day they'd be put in the same situation and will appreciate some help. I asked my wife if she could cook for our neighbors since she's a pretty good cook, and also since I work long hours and sometimes night shifts, so I'm busy most of the time. She agreed and cooked him meals for a week. Then unbeknownst to me, she stopped. Last night I checked in on my neighbor, and he told me that my wife hadn't sent him a meal for a while. I was shocked to learn that and quite frankly felt ashamed. So I apologized to him and made up some BS excuse on my wife's behalf as to why she couldn't send him any meals. I then went home to ask my wife about it. She just shrugged and said she didn't feel like cooking for him anymore. I was baffled, especially when she said she didn't have to. Well, yes, we don't have to help, but we're morally obligated. She said she was tired of doing this, but I told her this was not okay. The man's going through some struggles and his wife's in the hospital and we should help send him one meal per day. Not so hard to do. She said she would no longer be cooking and that's it. I called her cruel. For one, stopping to cook without giving any good reason and two, being insensitive and inconsiderate towards our struggling neighbor. She said I could cook if I felt so strongly about it but she knows why I can't, so that's that. I insisted that she should help with whatever she could since this situation is temporary and also since I'm doing my best by offering other ways to help. She said no and went upstairs. The argument kept going with her saying I was out of line to force her to cook, then call her cruel for saying she won't do it anymore. I said it's probably just for another week, so it's not that big of a deal but she says I'm the insensitive and inconsiderate one here. Am I the idiot here? I don't think I was asking for much. Poor guy deserves a hot meal at least once a day, especially with neighbors like that. What a great guy you are, volunteering other people's time and resources, but you just can't. So that's that? Practice what you preach, idiot. I'm laughing so hard on OP, patting himself on the back thinking he's such a sensitive and generous guy while he's not doing anything other than criticizing everyone for not doing things he's also not doing. I'm just baffled. You are the idiot. If you feel this strongly about getting this man's every need met for meals, you do the cooking. Stop bullying other people into it, especially other people who can't just walk away if they've had enough of being voluntold. Where's the rest of this family's social safety net anyway? Why is it all somehow fallen to you, apart from you apparently deciding it should? Are they getting help from the hospital or other agencies? Are you close enough to them to know? If not, are you sure they want your help? You guilted and bullied the neighbors and your wife into helping this man, who sounds like he is indeed a grown man and not a toddler like you're treating him but then you come up with excuses for not doing a thing yourself? Your wife is absolutely right. You can cook them yourself if you want to send him meals. Your wife has been doing it for a week already. Now it's your turn. Put some action behind your words if you really think you have a moral obligation to help. OP must depend on his wife a lot. I'm pretty sure my husband and kids wouldn't starve to death if I were hospitalized for a week. Yes, it would be difficult, and yes, it would be nice for others to help, but help should be given freely. Women don't exist to cook for the men folk. He's a grown-up. If he can't cook for himself, then he needs to learn how to order in, or you can do it. Kate and I got married about a year ago. It was a small ceremony with very few people in attendance. None of my family members, except my brother, were invited. Kate has a little daughter from a previous relationship. When we first started, Kate, my family, especially my mom, would make derogatory comments about how I shouldn't be with a single mother. My mom would say things like, you shouldn't be raising another man's child, or Kate is only using you for free child support. Those comments were extremely hurtful, 
and I decided to distance myself from most of them. Around Christmas time last year, my brother passed away. Because of this, I have begun to see my family more. Kate invited my sister-in-law for a nice dinner. My sister-in-law, without our knowledge, brought my mom along. Kate, though surprised, didn't say anything to my sister-in-law or my mom. At first, dinner was going well. Everyone was nice. The conversation was light and fun. At one point, my daughter woke up, and my wife and I knew that she wouldn't go back to sleep, knowing her aunt was in the house, so we let her stay up with us. We let her watch some TV and play with her toys, and she was paying no attention to the grown-ups. My mom decides to pick up my daughter to try and play with her. She starts crying and thrashing around, but my mom refuses to let go, muttering stuff about how she'll get over it. So Kate essentially had to force my daughter out of my mother's hands to calm her down in a different room. Once everything was sorted, Kate came back out with my daughter, and my mom started yelling at her about how she was turning her granddaughter away from her grandmother and how she was poisoning her mind. I obviously got upset with her and told her that maybe it's because she doesn't deserve the title of grandmother. This only added fuel to the fire. My mom stormed out, taking my sister-in-law with her. She later sent me a lengthy message about how I shouldn't have said that considering recent events. Now I feel incredibly guilty. Not the idiot. She chose to treat your wife and daughter like outsiders and never made an effort to repair that relationship. Now she thinks she can just force that relationship because she experienced a loss? That's just not how things work. She needs to make a serious effort to repair what she broke, starting with an honest apology. In my opinion, your mom is now willing to take the child she previously cast off and wanted nothing to do with, as she has no other options. And what will your mother say when your daughter does something to displease her? You aren't my real grandchild? Another concern is if you and Kate have a child together, your mom would again cast off your oldest child without a second thought to focus all her attention on the now golden grandchild, who is her blood. You sound like a great dad, but please don't give in to misplaced guilt and guard your daughter's well-being against what could be a toxic relationship with your mother. Me, 25 female, and my sister Lexi, 26, have a pretty good relationship. Lexi is also pretty close to my daughter, Emily, young child. Lexi has babysat Emily several times, and there's never been a problem. A couple of days ago, my boyfriend and I were going out to celebrate our second anniversary. Lexi offered to babysit for us, and everything seemed to be set up. My boyfriend and I were planning to be gone for about eight hours. Unfortunately, about four hours into the outing, my boyfriend started to get a migraine. He tried taking his regular medication, but they weren't kicking in that much. I decided to just drop him off at home so he could relax. I sent Lexi a text telling her that I was on my way home early. After I got home, I noticed that Lexi's car wasn't in my driveway. I went inside and called out for Lexi and Emily. They were nowhere in the house, so I immediately called Lexi. After I called her four times, she finally picked up the phone. I started yelling and demanding to know where the heck she was. She said we would talk after she got back to my house. About 20 minutes later, Lexi and Emily showed up, and I put Emily to bed. After Emily was sound asleep, I exploded on Lexi and told her to start talking. She told me that she was chatting with a random guy from Tinder, and he asked her to come over. She said she knew that Emily would just sleep the whole time, so she agreed to come over. She said that everything was fine. Emily just ate some snacks and went to sleep in the guy's spare bedroom. I completely lost it. I cussed her out and told her that she was an idiot. Then I asked her how she could do something so reckless. She got mad and told me that it wasn't a big deal. She would never let anything happen to Emily. I told her she had no right to take my daughter to a random guy's house. She said that she could read people and she knew that this guy wouldn't hurt anybody. I told her that she was nuts and she put my daughter in God knows how much danger. I told her that I could no longer trust her and never wanted to speak to her again. I also told her that she's never allowed to see Emily again. She started crying and said that I was overreacting to the whole thing. I told her that I paid her to protect my daughter, not endanger her so she could go have some fun. She continued to cry and beg, but I eventually kicked her out. Even though Lexi messed up big time, 
My mom says that I still overreacted. My mom says that I should reconsider separating Lexi and Emily because they're family. Am I the idiot? Who the actual heck thinks it's appropriate to take a little child to the house of a man they just met on Tinder? That is reckless. What if the guy was dangerous? I wouldn't have Tinder people over to my house if my daughter was home. Not the idiot. She puts your daughter in danger and thinks it's no big deal. Of course she shouldn't be allowed to see her again. Not the idiot. She offered to babysit. She could have seen this guy another day. That was absolutely irresponsible. Her reading people is ridiculous. Psychos often can be charismatic, and then people end up getting murdered. This man was a stranger. She knew nothing of him or what she was walking into. Your mom is trying to remain neutral, but she shows her bias. Lexi messed up big time and revealed she was untrustworthy and selfish. She didn't even tell you she was going. She probably thought she'd be able to come back undetected. And that's the sneakiest part. She was caught. My 35 male mom remarried her current husband 14 years ago. He's an okay man, but my dad will always and forever be my number one. When they announced that a baby was on the way, I freaked out. I told them there and then that I didn't want to ever be involved in this kid's life. I find it super weird that he's 22 years my junior. I'm old enough to be his damn dad. Why did my mom even need to have another child at 42? That baby fever was intense, apparently. I found the entire thing disgusting, to say the least. The years went by and when my half-brother was around 10 years old, he started saying how much he wanted to meet me. After a lot of nagging from my mother, I said, whatever, screw it, all right, I'm going to do it. From our first encounter, he basically clung to me. He has constantly tried to make me like and accept him for the past three years, but I just can't do it. He's a nice person and all, but I still find my mom's actions nasty, so I involuntarily associate him with that. I can't help it. I never wanted a sibling. Yesterday, he was over at my place and kept on asking me to watch a movie with him, which I didn't want to do. I ended up going off on him and told him that I didn't want to be his friend and actually wanted nothing to do with him at all. He immediately started crying and apologizing to me, saying that he doesn't have any friends and gets bullied at school for his introverted nature. He just doesn't understand why I despise him so much. He said that he's so tired of feeling rejected all the time, when all he does is be good to everyone. He said sorry one more time and told me that despite my huge hatred toward him, he still loves, admires, and respects me a lot. Then he ran out of the house. He hasn't reached out to me ever since. How can I be the idiot? You are the idiot. He hasn't reached out to you since. Gee, I wonder if that has something to do with you. A grown freaking man oozing hatred for a kid? Your own brother, no less. Who's done nothing wrong? This wah, wah, I don't want a sibling crap gets old by middle school. You're an adult. Your behavior is the disgusting one here and a little misogynistic, frankly, given the baby fever comment. Grow up, OP. You are the idiot. You're an adult. He's a child. He doesn't deserve to be treated like garbage because of how you feel about your parents' divorce. I can't even imagine how he must have felt this whole time, trying to be good enough for his older brother. Why even stay in contact with your mother if you were going to torture her child emotionally? Please strongly consider therapy. Are you sure you're 35? You clearly haven't grown up. Your mom remarried 14 years ago, and you still haven't come to terms with it? God forbid you decide to have a kid later in your life because you are so harsh in judging your mom. 42 is not the end of life, buddy. The only good thing you've done in all of this is prevent your BS from contaminating your half-brother. He clearly looks up to you, but what is he really looking up to? A baby man who still can't get over the fact that your parents are not together anymore? I, 28 female, am married to Josh, 30. We've been together since freshman, his junior year of college. We have a lot of pets in the house. Three dogs, three cats, a bunny, a turtle, a snake, and a macaw. We love all of them and spend a lot of time making sure we can take care of them. I am currently on maternity leave, and my due date is three months. I decided to foster a litter of puppies, along with the mama, after I saw she was scheduled to be euthanized. My sister-in-law, 30, yes, twins with my husband, 
lost her job recently and has to stay with us. She does contribute towards bills, but does not pay rent or anywhere near a third of the bills around the house. I don't mind as she still makes an effort. Unfortunately, she got sick last week, so she's still recovering and not actively looking for a job. She has been making faces left and right about the pets, claiming she has allergies. The macaw is too loud when it talks, and the dog's pitter-patter around the house is annoying. The cats sleep on her clean laundry. I think she only likes the bunny and turtle, as the snake also grosses her out. Josh, my husband, told her she should stop complaining, check her allergies, and maybe close her door, so cats don't go in. Dogs never do. She huffed and puffed until this morning when she saw she had a rash and went to go get it checked out. They told her it was an allergy and she lost it. She came back waving the papers with the diagnosis and shoved them in my face. I said she should go get tested for what kind of allergy it was. And she looked at me like I was dumb. It's your goblins around the house. You need to get rid of them or I might get an even more severe reaction. I laughed and said no. Josh came back from work and the two had a huge argument, which ended up with Josh saying, we might compromise on the rescued doggo mom and pups. The two came up to me, and I refused. I've committed to taking care of her, and I'm not returning her to the pound. Plus, how removing her helps any, I don't understand. 90% of the time, she's in a downstairs bedroom with her pups, or in the backyard. She has no contact with my sister-in-law. Our dogs and cats are free to go anywhere. My sister-in-law got cranky and said I was prioritizing a stray mutt to her health and said I was right. The stray wasn't the issue. I could keep it, but I have to board it in a pet hotel with her puppies and our animals. That's 16 animals on an average price of $40 per animal. And that is even if an establishment is crazy enough to take six-week-old puppies. So this comes up to $640 per day. I told her she's welcome to pay it, but I'll board them only for a week, and then she needs to move out. She lost her cool, called me an inconsiderate idiot, said I was trying to kill her with my pets, and was kicking her to the curb over a stupid mutt. Josh backed me up, but their mother called and said I was a jerk, and her son made a mistake ever marrying me. Josh is still arguing with his relatives. His sister is still in the house crying, and I am just about done. Am I the idiot? Edit. Sister-in-law is calling her mom nonstop, saying she feels like she's choking and might call an ambulance. But her anaphylactic shock has been off and on for about two hours. So it's safe to say that she's exaggerating. I do have an EpiPen in the house if she actually is serious. My mother-in-law wants to join in on the fun. And Josh is trying to dissuade her as I refuse to have another relative of his in the house indefinitely. My hormones are going crazy, and I want to cry as well. Please pray for me because I'm very close to kicking everyone out and just becoming the crazy lady with a zoo in the house. Not the idiot. She's a guest. If she's not happy with the living environment, she should make other plans. She doesn't even know what allergy she has and specifically does not want to find out, just in case it is not the pets. Because the allergy is likely not even a problem, she just wants to make you do what she always wanted and get rid of your pets. Dump this idiot mommy's girl off at her mother's. She's done demanding how you live your lives. Not the idiot. Look, it's a super full house. It definitely would not be comfortable for me either. But it's not my house. And neither is it your sister-in-law nor your mother-in-law. If the animals are such an issue to live with, why is she not moved in with her mother? Both your in-laws are acting like they assume they have a say of what happens in your house, which makes them idiots here. The pets were living there first. Sister-in-law can and should move out. 